Welcome to Advanced Data Analysis 2 with me, Eric Earhart, Professor of Statistics at the University of New Mexico. In this video, we'll get started with uh, class, 19, uh, class 20's assignment on logistic regression. So we'll scroll down to the assignment. Here it is. Uh, it's the homework assignment for logistic regression. And we'll just click on this link here. All right, so this is a complica complicated assignment a bit. Um, I'll tell you that I was unable to get a satisfactory model fit of this data, but it's possible that you'll try harder and find a, a better model than I did. So the structure of this, uh, this assignment is to uh, try to fit um, a multiple regression, logistic regression, and, um, and get a model fit and make some interpretations as well as predict a few, a few, um, a few observations. So the data set is quite famous. It's uh, the Galapagos Island species data. And just, you can, I encourage you to read, read through here. But the main variables that we're using is, so it's a set of islands and um, we have the names of the islands. We're gonna be looking at the plants that are either endemic to the Galapagos Islands, which means that they only grow at the Galapagos Islands versus all uh, all of the the total number of plant species that are found on each island, right? Plants are introduced by people visiting and stuff like that, but some plants only grow there, and out of a total number of plants. So we base we can from this from this ratio we can estimate the proportion of plants that are endemic to each island, and that's what that's the response that we're interested in. We're going to ignore the information about finches and use these five variables to try to predict um, what proportion of plants are going to be endemic. So the area of the island, the maximum elevation of the island, the distance to the nearest island, right, because the closer islands are to each other, the more easily genetic material can be shared between the islands. The distance to the largest island, which is called Santa Cruz, and also the area of um, the nearest adjacent island. Okay, so our goal is to model um, the proportion of endemic plants based on its island's characteristics, and, and also sort of the characteristics of neighboring islands. All right, so we're going to read this data set in, and I've got a bunch of heading information up top, so we skip a bunch of lines, and we can... Uh, create a new identifier ID variable. I compute the pro observed proportion and empirical logits of the plants on each island. So here p hat is the number of endemic over the total number of plants. And then the empirical logits are computed from p hat and the denominator plants. Um, in order to have three islands that we can predict later on, I'm going to artificially remove their responses. So here I've chosen three of the islands, Gardner, Santa Fe, and Wolf, and I'm putting that into a list, and I'm going to re basically move, remove those values from the data set. I'm going to start by capturing the, the actual observed probabilities. So I'm going to create a, sort of a, another data set on the side, that filters out only those islands in the predicted list. Okay, and we can use this later to see how good our predictions are. And then, and I don't know that there's a better way to do this, within our data set for these four variables, the two response variables and the two variables that are derived from those, if the, if the island is in the island list, so this is a way of choosing those rows. Then I'm going to set these values to NA. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep the original value. So this is a way of setting NA in the, in, for these three islands in these um, four, for these four columns. There are other ways to do this using base R that actually work uh, as cleaner code, but I'm trying to do everything tidyverse. And not everything is super slick in tidyverse. All right, um, 
there's an area here for data modifications. So if, if you realize you need to transform some variables, like a log or square root or something like that, then you can put those in the mutate statements. If you decide you want to exclude observations, you can exclude them by ID number by putting the ID numbers in with this triple dot and removing the true and the pound sign. Um, I guess ignore this solution piece of code there. That's a... All right, um, interpret plot. All right, so first thing we're going to do is um, reshape the data and and plot it. So here, I think I create two plots here. One is uh, for p hat, the proportion of success or proportion of endemic plants based on an, the adjacent area, elevation nearest, and Santa Cruz variables which are ordered alphabetically. And you can see that there's a lot of compression here, right? Observation uh, 11 is really scrunched up to the side, uh, 15 in this case. Um, there's some sort of outliers to the left and right here. Um, and so you might consider how, how are you going to address that. Um, for the empirical logits, we're sort of, we're not really looking for straight lines here because we have a multiple we have multiple variables going on. What we're really looking for in six-dimensional space, you've got empirical logits as, as the response variable, and you've got five other dimensions. So we're looking up for a six-dimensional hyperplane or five-dimensional hyperplane in a six-dimensional space that is flat. We can't see that. So we're we're taking a look here to see if if there's any transformations or outliers that we can that we can address. All right, so comment on how the proportion of endemic plants depends on each variables in terms of de increase or decrease. For example, as the adjacent island size increases, do the empirical logits tend to increase or decrease? I would say you can't really tell yet until you maybe tr do a transformation or remove an observation or something. Um, also interpret the plot regarding whether the empirical logits appear linear or if there's any trends. Um, Note that the marginal empirical logit plots don't have to be linear since we're really modeling in the six-dimensional space. All right. And what I would try to, I think my approach here is I'd focus on the empirical logit plot rather than the probability plot. And I would just try a bunch of things, right? Go ahead and be drastic and do try try several things quickly, like drop observation 11 and 15 because they're sort of extreme and see what happens. That might suggest a transformation for these variables, right? Um, uh, once you've done, done the transformation, maybe put those variable, put those observations back in to the data set and see whether the transformation uh, has addressed the need for removing an observation that would otherwise be highly influential, things like that. But I'd just do a, do a bunch of things quickly, right? So spend, spend some time in this code transforming variables, uh, dropping them out. Just try a few things and, and try to get data that that um, you feel confident that you could inter um, do an analysis for. All right, here's a uh, zero point. Okay, this is just something to look at to, for information. A predictor scatter plot matrix. We want to see, really we're looking here for what's the relationships between our x variables. And it's hard to see relationships right now, because but I think once you uh, rescale some of these variables, you'll see some strong relationships. And uh, it it may help you choose to use to not maybe use all the variables. In particular, I guess I sort of show my cards here, but um, maybe don't include both area and elevation, since possibly. <laughs> It's a really big wink. Um, you'll find that on a certain, uh, once you do a transformation, that these variables are highly correlated. So then we're going to fit our gen general linear model. And we have the number of um, endemic plants. We have the number of non-endemic plants, so successes and failures. And those are uh, being modeled as a first-order model, just the main effects here. 
I don't have any interactions. I don't have any squared terms. I'm doing a binomial regression. That's logistic regression on our data. So I'll, I'll tell you, I, I didn't look at any models more complicated than a first order model. You might, you, you'll see that this uh, lack of fit statistic, right? Our null hypothesis is that the model fits the data. Large p-values are consistent with the null. When p-values are small, we would reject the null and indicate that we have lack of fit. Um, this model doesn't fit the data. I don't mind telling you that. So you might try, you might even try a, a model with interaction terms and see if you can improve the model fit. Um, I have an automatic uh, stepwise regression here. I go in both directions and uh, print out the the resulting coefficients. My model, or the model that's that's predicted so far, includes area nearest in Santa Cruz. This will definitely change once you transform variables or or remove outliers, things like that. And you may also improve your model fit. Um, I'll say also right now that you know this model fit is based on these non-transformed variables that have outliers. So this is also going to improve. All right. Um, I guess I've already um, sort of discussed this. Um, if you don't find a model that fits the data well, regardless, just continue as though as, as though it works out. Okay. Okay, so I want you to make interpretations of both the full model and the reduced model um, about whether there's any evidence of gross deficiencies in the model, um, meaning lack of fit. Okay. Then we're going to interpret the logistic regression coefficients, and again, this is really just a matter of are they significantly different from zero and are they positive or negative? So is there a positive relationship or not? So in, in this example, which this will not be your final model, here's the coefficients table. Area is negative related with the proportion of endemics. So the larger the area, the fewer endemic plants, or the, the, the less, the lower proportion of endemic plants on an island, and that's significantly different from zero. Also, Santa Cruz is positive, so the closer you are to Santa Cruz, the higher the proportion of endemic plants you'd have, if this was your model. Okay? Great. And I have provided you with an example sentence that you can uh, fill in with your own words. I then want you to write out the model equation, where p hat equals a function of the, of the model. And these x's, you'll know from the notes, are uh, are coming from uh, the estimates here in the coefficient table multiplied by their variables. So that's what you'll fill in here. Um, I decided to just give this to you. Um, plot, the, plot the fitted probabilities as a function of the selected predictor values. Now, these these plots um, stink. <laughs> I don't mind telling you. Um, right, we are modeling data in a, in a higher dimensional space, maybe three or four dimensions, right? We have your response variable, and say you had, say you had area and adjacent as the final variables in your model, then you would have a three-dimensional hyperplane. And we're not going to really represent that very well in a two-dimensional plot, projecting it down into a smaller space. So um, so th these plots end up being really jagged. And I I'm actually not positive that this plot is very useful. Um, and that's sort of why I assigned it zero points. So anyway, so I, I, plot, the, I plot the data. Um, let's just uh, sort of scroll past that. Uh, interpret the prediction with 95% confidence intervals at the three islands that we didn't use to build the model. Okay, so recall in our list, these are the model the islands that we didn't include. We can get the the predicted values, and I think I may I think I give you a whole bunch of this stuff. Yeah, originally I 
I make you work for it, but in a COVID-19 world, um, I'll just give it to you. So I'm taking the, the Galapagos data, and in there are predictions. In particular, we have the island, and then the fitted p-value, the fitted lower and upper confidence interval. So this is from the regression model. I do a right join, so I put together this data set where I, I'm actually just taking these four columns out of the out of the data set and I'm going to join that with the original predicted true data set and all that that is only to get this p hat value so then I've got a bunch of columns I don't want so then I s select again the variables and just pull out the um, the p hat oh actually I should have just done a subset right here instead of doing it down here well, you can always write a program better. And then finally, I'm filtering out only the rows where I'm doing the predictions. All that gives me this little table. I've got my three islands, I've got my p hat. Okay, that's the proportion endemic plants on Gardener 2. And it's 80%. Here's what the model gives. It's estimating about 34% should be endemic with a uh, confidence interval between 0.31 and 0.37. So, you know, the comments to, to make here is that, you know, if my model's fitting the data well, then I'm probably going to make predictions of the true value with some accuracy. And right now, just glancing through, 0.8 is not in this interval. 0.45 is not in this interval. And for Wolf, 0.57 is in this interval. Okay, so one out of three. Ninety-five percent. We should probably be getting about ninety-five percent of them to be in there. So uh, one out of three, is that good or not? You know, right now we know that our model does not fit the data, so we should not be relying on the inference here. Finally, the caveats. So what limitations exist? And do you have any reason to expect that the model predictions may not be accurate for, for these three islands or for other islands that maybe are not included in our survey? So p just create a bold, bolded list down here, maybe uh, one to three caveats or limitations from this modeling exercise. And that's everything. All right, good luck with it.